Hey everybody, Tom Ballator again, this time with a walkthrough for problem number three in PSET 2. So hopefully you are excited about this problem, and you should be excited actually, because this is probably the first time in a problem set that you're doing something smart. And that's not to say that the previous coding you've done hasn't been smart, but if you think about the previous problem, problem number two, where we were looking for that fixed minimum monthly payment, and we were taking steps of 10, right? We were adding on $10, we were checking our answers. If it wasn't yet to the goal of having a balance of zero or less, we added another $10 on. We checked it again. If you're not there yet, add in another $10 on. That's like the kids in the car who keep saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? It's just not a good method for anybody. And as a human, you wouldn't do things that way. You'd probably take better guesses. And that is exactly what we do in problem three. We use this bisection search, also known as binary search, in order to have really these, these guesses that zoom right in on the answer and provide us with um, really, really neat code that does things um, intelligently. So let's think about some general hints for this problem. First of all, um, I guess a biggest hint, I haven't written it here, is that you finish problem two and you've got that code ready to go because we're just adding a few things on and you'll be done pretty quickly with this one, I think. Check out this video. It's in week two, simple programs, part three, simple algorithms, and then video on bisection search. It looks like, let's see, which one is it? Yeah, this one. And there is a slide in here. There's an example in here which is pretty much what you need for this problem. We've got things like epsilon here, maybe number of guesses you don't have to worry about, but there are guesses here. There are ways of finding guesses. Um, there's a while loop with a very interesting condition that will be useful. There's some things going on in here. I won't go through this example because I trust that you will if you haven't already done that, but this could really be the core you will use for problem number three. Okay. Think about the while condition. That's one of the biggest differences we have here. And let's actually look back at the pseudocode we had for problem number two. Problem number two, we had this while statement. And inside the while statement, we had a lot of things going on. We were doing the calculation to get that answer at the end of the year. And then we were seeing that, hey, if our balance is still above zero, well, we're gonna have to increment our guess. And if not, get out of there and just report the result because you're done. Um, now, this time though, this while condition might be a little bit more, at least in my case, it's a little bit more complex because this time we're dealing with not just simply getting to zero or below, but we're trying to get within one cent of zero. And you'll remember there was a lot of discussion in the lectures on floating point imprecision about how you cannot necessarily, or how you often usually cannot represent floating point numbers exactly with the binary system that is being used in modern computers. Therefore, we can't get to the exact answer, but we can get within a certain range. You have to think about what you can do for a condition here. But I would say, um, I would say maybe, how about this? While you are still not within the desired range of the answer, and in this case, the answer being a, a balance of zero. So maybe, well, we've got epsilon. That's always a good one to use. Um, we, while you're not within that range, you're still outside of the range of the answer. Do this calculation, and that calculation will be the same that you've had from before. Um, the difference here, though, is that let's think of a new condition. Let's say you do that, and you find out that, yeah, actually, you have gotten within that range. If you are within that range, then you just want to get out of there, right? You want to stop doing calculations, right? Then get out of there and repeat report the result. Hopefully that's the case. Maybe the first shot, you get that, you're done. That'd be fine. Probably not going to be the case. So therefore, you have to have some other cases. Otherwise, if that's not true, if you still are not within the range, how are you going to refine your guess? Earlier, what we had here was, you know, simply add 10 to the guess. That wasn't a very good method. We're going to do something smarter this time. So we're going to do a few different things, right? Um, and I think it depends on how your guess was relative to the actual answer. And what I mean by that is here, you know, if, if your answer was lower than what you were expecting, then you have to raise your lower bound. If 
your answer was higher, then you have to lower your upper bound. So let's think how we can write some pseudocode for that. So if you guessed too high, then what's going to happen here? If you guess too high, that means that your upper bound should therefore be set to something lower, right? So set your upper bound to something lower, perhaps the answer that you just had. That would be a good choice, right? Um, otherwise, that means that you guessed too low. Um, set your lower bound to something higher. And then that should be fine. Okay, and then reporting the result, maybe you take care of that in a different stage right here if you're gonna get out that way. So this is just some code that's not everything you need, obviously. You're gonna to have to declare variables for your guesses. You will have to be, most importantly perhaps, remembering that you need to not overwrite the balance. We talked about this in the walkthrough for problem number two, and I'm sure you got the answer for that, but you have to have some sort of proxy to take account of the, the balance that you're getting fed in each time and not to overwrite what the grader is giving you. And then finally, rounding only at the end, I'm getting a lot of people with errors of a few cents that are not getting them any credit for their answers. And it's usually because they're rounding at early stages. And you just really want to remember that you round only at the very final stage. Otherwise, you get an answer that's slightly off and the grader will complain.